Hello, new and old friends. My name is 242, and today, Two went and found me some stories of revenge. I know everyone likes a little revenge to start their day, and I have four for you. Two petty and two pro. Hmm. Seems like two had a theme for me. So, grab yourself a tea or a coffee and sit back as I tell you these tales. You refuse to do your job? Watch me weaponize bureaucracy. Last semester, I went abroad and studied at a tiny university. Due to it being so small, all paperwork was handled by one single secretary. Let me stress this, she did not have a lot of work to do. When I arrived, I needed to get my student ID. In this case, it was simple. Small piece of paper, just printed and cut out. Not laminated. Nothing. I went in and asked her for my ID since I needed it to pay cheaper fares for public transit, for reduced prices on food, etc. She said, sure, come back next week. I'll have it ready then. Keep in mind, she just had to print it and cut it out. It would have taken three minutes. But okay. I said sure and left. A week later, I show up again. She goes, Oh, sorry, I didn't get around to it yet. Come back in a week. I leave a lot grumpier than I was the week before. I go to her office a week later, only to hear the same excuse. Not only did she not do it, she is acting visibly annoyed, loudly sighing upon seeing me. <sighs> At this point, I'm mad. I'm on a budget and I have been paying full price for everything just because she can't seem to print out a piece of paper. I return the next day and proudly she presents me with my ID. For an afternoon, I am happy as can be. Then I realize my ID number does not match my documents. Essentially, it's useless. Putting it into the system, as done when receiving discounts, will not turn up my account slash documents. It's a dead end. I go back to her to correct it. Again? I'm sent away and told to wait another week. When I turn up again, she hands me the same ID with the same wrong number. At this point, I hold a special hate for her in my heart, and I start to think about plans to steal her time as much as she stole in mine. When exam period comes around, I decide to mix it up a bit. I use both my real and fake ID numbers in my papers in confirmation of attendance. These are all corrected and signed by the professors, but have to be put into the system by her. So, consequently, not all of my credits show up in the system. Both I and my professors can confirm everything has been turned in and graded. It's now her responsibility to find the glitch and fix it. This might have been an easy task for a competent person, but she could not figure it out. I delayed in regularly asking her about individual courses and papers and watching her get more and more desperate. Eventually, she realized that the ID numbers were faulty. She wrote me an angry email, essentially asking me how this could happen. I sweetly replied that I must have gotten it mixed up, given that I had waited weeks for my ID and then received a faulty number twice before getting the real one several months into my semester. Sweet revenge. I really enjoy this petty revenge. Didn't hurt anyone, but definitely wasted some time, and that's fair because she wasted OP's time and a lot of OP's money. And, well, Opie did try to, you know, fix the problem a couple times, and she was too lazy to fix it first, so. 
Neighbor won't stay off my property. Gets fenced out. A little background. My current place is a fairly new build. Backs to some woods and was empty a bit before moving in. My neighbor has a corner lot, also backs to woods, but a bit of an odd shape since the woods are considered protected green space. Because of this situation, they used maybe a third of my backyard when they did outdoor activities. Volleyball, badminton, etc. None of this bothered me because their kids are really nice and respectful. Fast forward a couple of years and I'm having the backyard renovated. Well, the neighbor apparently had an issue with this because he kept bothering the crew during construction, telling them what they could and couldn't do, saying they were being too loud or doing things wrong, and claiming that I had asked him to oversee the crew. Spoiler, I did not. Eventually, the head contractor has had enough and complains to me about the micromanagement. I go and talk to the neighbor and he acts like he's doing me a huge favor by keeping them in line, but agrees to back off. And he does. For about two days. I get an alert on my ring on a day the crew is off and there was my neighbor on my patio picking up inspecting and throwing down some pavers that had already been laid. I tell him to kindly get the F off my property and he proceeds to flip me off and walk back to his place. Time for some petty revenge. When we first moved in, I had a whole house natural gas generator put in because power outages are common when thunderstorms roll through. The thing about those is, they are loud when they turn on. And since we were doing the renovation, I planned on putting a living fence in across from the generator to mute some of the sound that would travel to his place. Well, I talked to the head contractor and we happily agreed to shift the trees from the generator down to the woods and essentially cut off his property from my property. Neighbor was not happy about that move and called the city surveyor to dispute the property line, but my contractor had made sure we were fully on my property with 8 inches to spare to account for tree growth. End result? Neighbor is ticked, but powerless. I have some nice trees to look at from my backyard. And there is nothing to stop the sympathy of my generator when it kicks on every week to do a status check. Edit. Got bigger than expected. Quick edit based on comments. The neighbor, despite his butthole behavior, isn't a threat to my property. Renovations were finished last year and he hasn't retaliated at all. I do have video coverage on the generator side of the house and can see when folks enter the area so we're covered there. Thanks for listening. I feel sorry for the neighbor's kids. I mean, they now can't use this yard to play in, but now the neighbor has to listen to a generator once a week, not including when you have to use it because the power's out. And now, also lost the ability to go into the neighbor's yard, so this is a pretty good petty revenge. This is how I stop the gossip for good. My mom had a fairly consistent habit of gossiping and sharing quite personal information around. We knew she was doing it, but she would adamantly deny having ever done such a thing. I wish I could remember what she did that finally made me snap. It couldn't have even been that important. It was just the millionth time and for once, I wanted her to admit what she done and knew that we knew too. So we set up a sting. My friend Jan and I approached my mom and told her that Jan was pregnant and she wasn't ready to tell her mom yet. And she was really worried what people would think about her having a baby so young. She didn't want anyone to know yet, so it had to be top secret. Having set the trap, 
I figured within a few weeks or so, I would have some evidence we could use. But I was so, so wrong. The very next day, my sister, grandmother, and neighbor all asked me how my young pregnant friend was doing. When I was asked by a lady who worked at the supermarket that same day, I figured this had gone far enough and went home to confront my mom, only to have my dad ask me how Jan was doing. I confronted my mom right there in front of my dad, which is when she started with the usual, I would never do that, they must have heard it from someone else routine. I had explained very shortly and clearly that we had fed her a lie to see how far it would spread. And the reaction was glorious. My mom's mouth fell open and she just had nothing to say at all. My dad, on the other hand, fell back on the sofa roaring with laughter, bemoaning the fact that he hadn't thought of this years ago. It was a moment I will treasure forever and the point was thoroughly made. Now that my mom was aware of what had happened, I was able to satisfy all further inquirements towards my friend's health with the true story. And my mom's audience for any further gossip was somewhat reduced. So this is very smart on OP's part because now you know for a fact that your mom is definitely the one gossiping and now you know not to trust her with any big secrets and the mom has completely lost the trust of their child. So the mom messed up and this is pretty a revenge. Fiance left me due to my cancer diagnosis. I left her destitute. This has been four years ago, so the sting is gone and my revenge has been had. Sorry if this isn't the right forum. We dated for four years and had what I thought was a great relationship. We were both well-established professionals who both owned homes in the same neighborhood, and we both had daughters in the home. Her daughter was 11 and mine was 16 when we met. We had actually planned to get married, build a house, and raise the two together. We planned the house build because she had recently been diagnosed with a neurological disease that would eventually put her in a wheelchair and needed something that was ADA friendly. During the planning stage, I began doing landscaping and construction projects on her home to increase the resale value. All in, I invested roughly 30k USD into the home, running everything through my side construction business for tax, permitting, and resale purposes. We had a contract that payment would be made upon the sale of the home. I produced the invoice for each and every project, but never pushed for payments because of the prior agreement. Fast forward six months. We're looking at properties to develop and finalize drawings on the home when I began to feel ill. I couldn't eat, constantly vomiting and passing blood. I began noticing that my abdomen looked swollen, which was odd because we were both very clean eaters and were in the gym every day. So I went to the doctor and began having tests done. During this time, she was having small cognitive issues and the stress of her current position was exacerbating her condition. So she took a 20k per annual cut in pay along with a lesser position inside the company. After a month or so of different tests and a biopsy, it came back that I had a golf ball sized tumor in my stomach and would need to begin chemotherapy. So I began chemo and radiation treatments, which made me, expectantly so, extremely ill. She was spending time helping me around the place on the weekends and staying over more, to the point that we were both at my home more than theirs. At this point, I suggested we go ahead and put one of the houses on the market and move in together until the new house was built. 
I have a great supplement insurance as well as a long-term illness plan. So using that coupled with the sale of one of the houses would push us through comfortably and help ease the financial stress on her. Shortly after this discussion, she became extremely distant. Her daughter wasn't coming down and hanging out with mine anymore. She had excuses for not getting together. She quit driving me to the treatments and stopped staying over. She then dropped a bomb, a sentence that will forever be burned into my psyche. I love you, but I can't see myself taking care of someone this sick in the long term and I don't think we should see each other any longer. In. A. Text. It. Broke me. I won't lie. This was the first woman I had ever opened up to and planned a life with since my wife died when my children were one and three. However, I tried to be mature about it. I forced myself to understand her position and to accept that I could not change. I calmly, the next day, gathered all of her things, packed them neatly, loaded them in my truck, and took them to her house to leave on the back porch while she was at work, in order to avoid any awkward exchanges. Walking around the back and under the porch cover, I sat down a box and saw her in her back living room on the couch, having sex with a man that she had introduced me as a lifelong friend. I had dinner and drinks with this man and his girlfriend. We had gone on vacation with them as well. I never spoke of this incident with her and simply sent her a text later explaining that I would leave her things on the side porch to pick up at her convenience. I discovered eight or nine months later from his now ex-girlfriend that they had broken up due to him confessing that he had been sleeping with my SO dating back to about the time we finished drawing on the new house. Now I'm ticked. Revenge time. At this point, I had fished chemo and radiation for the time being and was feeling healthier. I was going through some much neglected paperwork when I ran across the file that contained $32,680 in unpaid, long overdue invoices, which I promptly sent to my lawyer to begin the lien process on the home. It turns out I couldn't have done this in a moment too soon because she was set to put the house on the market. Coupled with the interest over the course of what was then 19 months overdue, the invoice was hefty. That, along with the agreement of selling them when the house was sold and the lawyer's fee, left her with roughly 10 k after the sale of the home and settling her current mortgage. She promptly had to back out of the purchase of another home and move in with her oldest daughter and two grandchildren. She also had to leave her job and begin receiving disability. I ran into her a little over a year ago and she looked like she had aged 20 years and was in a wheelchair we had talked about. We chatted cordially but briefly and I excused myself and went on with my day. A few days later, her younger daughter called me and spoke of my running into her mom and could we hang out sometime. I gave her a vague answer, thanked her for calling, and again went on with my day. The ex then called me a week or so later and began apologizing for leaving me as she did. Again, cordial but short, I thanked her for calling and hung up. She began texting and this went on for several weeks until one, she asked if I could ever see us rekindling what we had, to which I replied, I can't see myself taking care of someone so sick in the long term. Remember the box on your back porch? Did you think that lifelong friend brought that over from my house? Good luck to you. Goodbye. I sometimes feel guilty over this, but not much, and not often.
I didn't get so mad when she texted him saying, you know, I couldn't see myself taking care of someone so ill long term. Some people can't do that, even though she already has a long term disability and illness coming to her, basically. What really got me mad was her cheating on him while he was going through chemo and not breaking it off. That's messed up. Very messed up. And I think OP definitely did what he needed to do. She owed him money and she forgot about it because she's an idiot. And she messed herself over. That is the end of our tales for today. I hope you enjoyed them. And if you did, hit that like button. And I want you to make sure it feels it. Of course, if you'd like to hear more from me, hit that subscribe button and make sure that bell is changed to all notifications. If you would like early access to my videos and a few other bonuses, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below. Come back Sunday, 42 is out looking for some new chilling stories for you as I speak. We all need to cool off during this summer heat after all. Bye.